نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله وصحابته ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى على سنته وسار على نهجه الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ايها المؤمنون احبتي في الله Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu reports from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an authentic hadith and this hadith before I read the hadith mentions some of the things that we usually look down at them we consider them small things in reality these are the things which bring me in you closer as a muslim which which close makes the bonds of the islam the muslims to each other stronger and stronger and the other hadith the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says la tahqiranna min al ma'ruf shay'a do not belittle anything good no matter how much small thing is do not look at that down do not belittle them لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا عند حديث ابو هريره رضي الله عنه وارضاه the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions our rights upon each other what is your rights upon me what is my rights upon you as a muslim as a one family of islam which has no does not believe in a race or color or whatever nowadays you see but the only one thing is important for me in you if you are muslim i am muslim there are the things that we have to do towards each other to make our relationship stronger and stronger there are many hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that mentions the rights of the muslim but this hadith includes majority of those ones abu huraira radiyallahu anhu says عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حق المسلم على المسلم ست The first thing the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says that as muslims as a muslims your rights upon me are six things these six things are when it is done the society will be safe you will be safe i will be safe we will have a relationship that nobody will be able to break it down and all these things that's mentioned in the hadith these are the things that happens in our daily life social life although nowadays the social life is changing to facebook and to the whatsapp and to those things social they call it social which is i don't get it how it is social from which point of view it is social breaking down the families breaking down the friends taking away son from the father daughter from the mother husband from the wife and then we call it social media social social and all of us we go home 
You see the husband and sitting in one corner of the room, the wife in the other one, even if she's cooking, she's busy with the food, and the son even does not listen because he's busy with his friends, the daughter don't, think, don't talk about it. And we named that life, this life that we look at it, we named it social life, and we believe in it. When we sit together, we see each other, we do not respect. There is no, no rights given to each other. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned these rights that it has to be personally, one by one. You have to do them. It's an action. You have to take that action and then you will see the result of that. You do not do that action. You do not act upon that hadith for sure. We will be coming to a masjid but we don't know each other. We miss a brother for a one month. He's not coming to the masjid who used to be with us in the Fajr Salah. We don't even ask about him. And then we say, what's happening to the Muslim? Why it should not happen to the Muslims? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in these rites, Qila Ya Rasulullah. It was said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said that the rights of the Muslim upon the other Muslim are six things. It's not much, six things. So it was said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what are they, ya Rasulullah? Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in want to learn. They want to know, to act upon. They want to get closer to each other. They want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they know that the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be gained by anything else except when we respect each other, when we get closer to each other as a Muslims, when we act upon what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when we act upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, number one, إِذَا لَقِيتَهُ فَسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ إِذَا لَقِيتَهُ فَسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ Now billahi alaykum. If I don't know you, if I don't speak your language, I'm not from your race, I'm not from your country. How many times you saw a Muslim brother in the mall, in the market, you said, Salaamu Alaikum to him? First of all, sometimes we feel shy to give a salam in front of the people to our Muslim brother. Because around us are people, you don't want them, know, you don't want them to know that you're a Muslim. Subhanallah. You are shying to, to announce that you are a Muslim. People are proudly, they are saying, I'm a mulhid. I don't believe in a God. Proudly they are saying that. And we are feeling shy to say to our Muslim brother in the mall or in the market or on the street, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Why? Because the person who is standing on the side, he might know that I'm a Muslim. Our youth, our youngsters, when they are going to university, to college, they are feeling shy to have the Qur'an with them. But he's not feeling shy to have that big calculus with him. The big management book with him, and he's feeling proud of that. I'm going to university. I have this book. When he's reading an Islamic message, he will hide it so nobody can see it. بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَأَ Islam became strange. Islam became strange as it was strange in the beginning. فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاءَ إِذَا لَقِيتَهُ فَسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ You met your Muslim brother, say, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah to him proudly. Tell him. And the benefit of the salam will come back to you and to him. The minute you tell him, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, you are giving assurance to that person that you are safe from my side. I will never harm you. But if you did anything with your eyes, with your mouth, with the wording, you said anything about him, so you lied in the beginning what you said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 
You are giving assurance to your brother that you are safe from my side. I will not harm you. I will not say anything bad about you. And you give a salam to youngster, to elder, whoever you meet, you give a salam to him. Giving a salam is sunnah. But the minute somebody gives you a salam, the reply becomes wajib. The reply becomes wajib. And the reply has to be exactly the same words if it is not better than that. First of all, it has to be better than what the person told you. If he said, Assalamu alaikum, you tell him, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. And add to it, Wa idha huyyitum bitahiyyatin, fahayyu bi ahsana minha. Reply in a better way than that. Tell him, you are safe from my side as well and more than that. I was listening to one of the mashayikh. The sheikh said a story. He was talking about the end of the life of Imam al-Albani, rahimahullah. For any reason, the sheikh was not able to travel to Jordan to meet the sheikh. And these are the last days of Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah. So one of the mashayikh who was traveling to Jordan, he met him and he told him that I'm going to Jordan, you don't need anything from, I want to go and meet Sheikh Al-Albani. So he told him when you go there, because this Sheikh called him many times and the student told him that he is not allowed to talk to anyone. The doctor said he's in the hospital. So he told him when you go there, just give me a call and I want to hear at the end the voice of Sheikh Al-Albani. He said, this brother, the sheikh, when he arrived in Jordan, suddenly I received a call and I saw the number is three numbers. So I picked up the phone and I saw this brother is telling me, I am with the sheikh, here is the sheikh. And Sheikh Al-Albani, he said, he's just allowed to give you a salam only. He said, the sheikh said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And the sheikh said, I told him, wa alaykum as -salam. He said, I start crying when I heard the voice of Sheikh Al-Albani. But he just replied, wa alaykum as -salam. He didn't even complete, wa rahmatullahi wa barakat. He didn't say that. He said, Sheikh Al-Albani, give me a lecture for five minutes. He quoted all the ahadith that your reply has to be better than my salam. He is at the time of the death, but still he want to teach a proper sunnah. We, when we talk about the sunnah, people are laughing at us. When you act upon the sunnah, people are today laughing at you. This is not the matter. Don't think that this is something. No, this is at the end of the life. This is what's going to happen. The sunnah becomes, Islam becomes strange. When you meet your Muslim brother, give him a salam. The Prophet said, in a hadith, لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا To get into the Jannah, you need a passport. Not the digital passport, not the paper passport, your name, your family, whose son you are, whose family, which country you are from, which country's passport is strong and, you know, when you have it, a Canadian passport, you go to the airport, you look at the people down, I have a Canadian passport, you know. No, you need the passport of Iman. Iman is your passport. لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا You cannot get into the Jannah without the Iman. Number one thing, you have to have the Iman to get into the Jannah. No Iman, no Jannah. Period. This is not what I am saying, this is what Allah in His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُّوا And the Iman will not be completed until you love each other. We sit together. We pray together in one masjid and then we talk behind each other. We say bad words behind each other. This is like this, this country is like this, this country is like that. وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُّوا Your Iman will not be completed until you love each other. 
And that love has to be built up for the sake of Allah, not because I am from your country, you are my cousin, you are from my race, I speak your language. No. And then the Prophet وسلم, continues. أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ Don't you want me to teach you something? If you do that, you will love each other. The love will increase between each other. أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ You will love each other with that action when you do. أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Spreads the salam. Say the word salam to each other a lot. And another hadith says, even if a tree is become between each one of you, you are walking, and then suddenly the pillar of the masjid came, you have to walk from that side and the other brother from this side, you meet again, you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Every one of us we know, the minute you see someone, you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What comes the next after that? A smile. If you don't love someone, will you smile in front of his face? Unless la qaddar Allah, la qaddar Allah, if somebody is a hypocrite. أَوَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُوهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Spread the salam. This word, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, these are not the simple words. These are the words of greeting from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are the words of greeting of Islam, a deen, a religion. This is not that somebody, two, three people from Arabs, they came together and they made these words. No, this is a wahi of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That is why the result is great. That is why what it comes after that is something that every one of us, tahababtum, it increases the love. The things that we need, the things which is the need of the society, community today, the things that we are lacking of today, we don't have between each other. That is the love. The real love, not the fake one. The love that we get together and we respect each other from that. That will not come except if we act upon this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says in an authentic hadith. If a person says, this is an incident happened. A man came and he said, Assalamu alaikum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting in a gathering with the Sahaba. So he said, ten. Another person came and he said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, twenty. Ishroon. The third person came and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, thalathoon. 30. The Sahaba is looking at each other. Let us pause here for a minute with this hadith. My brothers, it is very important that we know the adab, the respect of the Sahaba with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes the Sahaba out of the respect, they will not speak, they will not ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, we argue with the mashayikh. Somebody comes, he gives a lecture. We didn't like it. It didn't went to my brain. My maulana, my sheikh didn't told me like that. So I start back and forth. Where is the adab of knowledge? Where is the adab of someone who is talking, qala Allahu, qala Rasulullah. The Sahaba will wait until somebody stranger comes, especially the bad ones. They will throw all their questions to him. Let him ask and they will listen. 
But they wanted to learn. Whenever they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to ask them something, they will say, Allahu wa Rasuluhu A'lam. Sometimes they know the answer, but out of the respect, they will not answer the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They will say, Allah in his messenger knows the best. The Sahaba Ridwanullahi Alayhim Ajma'een, they are looking at each other. Somebody has to ask Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is 10, what is 20, what is 30? Ya Rasulullah. One of the Sahaba asked, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the first person who said, Assalamu Alaikum, he got 10 rewards, 10 hasana. Wal hasanatu bi ashri amthaliha ila sab'umi'ati da'if. The second person who said, he added one word, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. He got 20 rewards, 20 hasana. The third person who got the full package, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. He got 30 rewards, 30 hasana. Multiple 10 times and up to 700 times. This is the reward. This is the reward from Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you this reward, what will happen to the person that you give the salam? What Allah will do between you and him? Tahabaptum. The first thing will happen, the love. It will bring love. It will break all those barriers that you have between. Even if he doesn't speak your language, he don't understand you after the salam, whatever you say in your language. But when you say assalamu alaikum, he will know that he is my Muslim brother. He will not harm me. I'm safe here. I feel safe. I have somebody on my side, on my right side. I can depend upon this person. But unfortunately, as I said, we are very proudly say hi and hello. Very proudly saying to each other, the minute we pick up the phone, hi, hello. Yani, where is the deen? Don't we have a words? And if we ask somebody, do you want the rewards? Yes, where it is? It's not in the market. It's not in the mall. It is with you. You have them, but you don't want them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told you, but you are not using it, you are not acting upon it. What will happen if somebody called you and you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh? Especially you know who called you. You know the name Muhammad and Ahmad came there. Even if you don't know it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, you give a salam to whoever you know or you don't know. Ala man ta'rif wa man lam ta'rif. You know him or you don't know him, give him a salam. As far you find, you know that he's a Muslim, give him assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إذا لقيته فسلم عليه. When you met your Muslim brother, the first thing, the first right, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My brothers, the rest of the hadith, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a life and we were together one time, inshallah, we will talk about that. But this is the hadith of Abu Huraira. Go check it in any book of the hadith, you will find out. The beginning of the hadith says the rights of the Muslim upon other Muslims is six things. You can find that in any book of the hadith, inshallah. Go check it and read it. We need to read. We need to learn to act upon. To bring that love in the community, in the society, to bring each other together, we need to act upon this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم الأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم ربنا جعلنا مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتنا ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم رب اغفرهما كما ربيانا صغارا اللهم رب ارحمهما كما ربيانا صغارا 
اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر إخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان يا رب العالمين أمدهم بمدد من عندك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم انصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا أكرم الأكرمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين